This is my USGI issue surplus Lanzetta compass. There are a number of different manufacturers of these, and there's two other basic types. This one is one of the tritium ones, which means it glows in the dark all by its lonesome without putting light on it. Um, all of those say controlled disposal or something similar. All the modern ones, the current issue ones, have a little radiation symbol. They're also phosphorescent. This says phosphorus, but whatever. Phosphorescent compasses, which are the ones you have to shine a light on, to go, and then they glow for a shortish period of time. Mechanically, they're identical, so the same instructions apply to both of these. In this case, we're going to use mine. Um, if you see it in other videos, mine also has orange, well, besides having my name on it, it has little orange numbers, which is my pace count, because we don't do stuff uh, frequently enough to, for me to remember what my pace count is. Um, month to month sometimes, and I have a bad memory. If you're at all like that, I suggest you do the same kind of thing, once you've established what yours is. Compass al should always have a lanyard on it. For these, it should always be long enough to go on your neck and still use the compass as we show you how to do it normally. These have a thumb hook. It's used for your thumb, which we'll show you later. And the, by the way, the lanyard should be put on like this so that it seems to tangle when the thumb hook goes down, but that it's not tangled when the thumb hook is folded. It's okay, it'll get out of the way when you try to put your thumb through there. You have to move that, then you can unfold the top body from the bottom body. The top body has direction of travel indicators and a window with a sighting line in it, which we'll talk about later. The both sides, when they line up, turn into a ruler, which actually is tapered so that it gives you a nice sharp edged point so you can see when you're laying down um, on a map and trying to plot points. Bottom body has, first, a window and a lens for the lens attic portion. Uh, the lens, the lens base or cover uh, also functions as a lock for the compass. Compass needle is on a clear panel with mills on the outside and degrees on the inside. And it's inside a fixed bo sealed body. There's a graduation ring on the outside which you use to dial in where you want to point things. The locking is because it's not a fluid dampened compass, but a magnetically dampened compass. So, although it dampens quite well in the normal dimension like that, it only wobbles back and forth a moment, it can wobble up and down and in theory be damaged from, say, jumping out of airplanes or stuff the Army does. So all magnetically dampened compasses lock the needle so it doesn't wobble right now when it's in the closed position. The compass itself, the capsule and the graduation ring encompass a few other little features. There is a direction of travel line etched onto the capsule, which in this case doesn't move, only the graduation ring moves. So this is fixed and lines up with the direction of travel marks on the lid of the compass. As I said, the degrees are the red on the inside, mills black on the outside, with no preceding zeros. And for mills, of course, a couple digits are moved. So this is 6,000 instead of 60 mills. You just need to take that account. But also, this is not 40 degrees. You should always read that as 040. And preceding zeros are required for this. So this is 600 mils, not 6 or, of course, 6,000. Don't be confused by that. And always note and memorize things. Uh, it has a little hint, west, east, in case you're easy, you're afraid that for easy to forget. It doesn't d label north and south. North is simply the one with the triangle. South is nothing. The needle just ends in nothing, nothing in particular. To lock in a bearing is going to be discussed otherwise, but let's say you've actually already locked one in and you're traveling in normal everyday daytime traveling mode. The best way to use pretty much any compass is what I call center hold. First thing, in theory, you hold it up against your chest, but because we all carry rifles, radios, cables, ammunition, other things that we're going to interfere with the compass. Always remember that metal things interfere with compasses. This pencil has metal in it. Other compasses interfere with compasses quite strongly. Even fairly small devices 
with batteries in them. This should interfere, but apparently, the, yeah, there. Small deviation, even from this very small watch battery in this flash, the tiny flashlight. So therefore, the center hold is modified, so you put yourself at what I call forearm's length away. You put your, tuck your elbow in to the side of your body or your chest, and you hold the compass out at the forearm's length, print level. Then you can read. You can glance down and read the thing. You can even do this while walking, which is why we have dampening on the compasses at all. And then what you do is you make sure that the needle, the, tri the black triangle, is pointing at the mark on the graduation ring. This also works, of course, at night because there are two identical marks. For the main one you're likely to use, there's two identical tritium vials, one on the compass needle and one on the graduation ring. You simply line those up, and that's the way you're going. So when you're traveling, the, the bottom cover with the lens on it is always facing you. And the top cover, which is the direction of travel indicators, is always facing where you're going. So in this case, I want to be facing that way. And now I'm traveling the correct direction. And we would be walking this way whenever we're going anywhere. And every once, and you put it down or you fold it up and every once in a while you pull it out and you look and it takes a moment to dampen and there, you will have to hold it somewhat carefully if you're walking around. You get a general impression of things. And then you can assure you're still making, going the right direction. The other thing this does, and the kind of the main point of it being, having all this folding stuff, this sighting line, the lens, and uh, I'll show you that this little rifle sight notch in the back here is that you can use this to sight with significant precision as well. You can do that to make sure you're on you're still tracking the right bearing, but you can also do it to make sure in order rather to get a bearing. For example, if you're walking some general direction and you need to make make sure that you don't get lost in amongst a pit or you're walking towards smoke or a flare or something and you're going to lose track of that soon. You quickly, you take a bearing, a sighting off of that, and then you'll lock in a bearing. To take sighting with these things, you fold the compass back up. I always say start like this. There's the top of this will fit just barely into this kind of hollow in the lid. When they're held together, you can't pull that out. Now, you're free to do it any number of other ways. Lots of people sight like this, or that, or this, or this. That's up to the, uh, your, the way your eyes work, and how you can line up things, and how your eye looks through the lens and sees inside the capsule. I, I personally actually use pretty much this, and it's where I always say to start. Then, we find out why this is called a thumb ring. Because you put your thumb through it, and then wrap your couple other, a couple of three other fingers around the front of the compass. So you hold it like this. This is upright, but sideways, so you can tell what I'm doing. Like this. There are, uh, there's a gap underneath the hinge part where you're, when at least one finger can go, and there's some other little grabby bits between where the two pieces go that you can put another finger. You hold it like that. Then, you remember you're sighting. I talked about these rifle sights. So you're going to sight it like you do a rifle. And you're not just going to hold it out in the air in front of you, you're going to touch it to your actual chin. I'll show you. Or rather, 